Hello, YouTube. Being from the bedroom here, you could tell junkie. So I'm just gonna show you, you know, a little bit of what I I have had done to this fine specimen, and um, <clears throat> you know the great deal that I had gotten on it as well. And if you see one, just like the Epiphone that I had mentioned, um, this is one of those great finds um if you see one grab it got my dog in here and she's like looking over everything and uh if you could see it or not there is the case it came with beautiful tweed hard shell case i just can't believe it <clears throat> i'm blown away about that and the guitar so yeah, let's let's make some noise. Um, going through my uh, Demon FX, uh, the boost and the drive, but I have the volume at like three. So do the standard. No 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 no. Do do, do the standard. Plus, I'm just I, I, I'm I'm tired of reading comments about my playing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what scale I'm in. I don't know what notes I'm playing or what chord I'm I'm supposed to be in, or whatever, whatever you call it. Uh, what key? 
key. The key thing there is, um, so yeah, <clears throat> what I had done is, again, I found this uh, the day it was posted because I was looking for one of these and checking every day. And the day it was posted, on a Tuesday of last week, I pulled the trigger and I got it on the Friday of last week. Um, <clears throat> when I got it, it was, I just had to lower the bridge pickup because these pickups are super hot, super bright. And I even have the tone on the bridge pickup down to like seven because it's, it's that ballsy. It's got that much punch. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> and I just raised the neck pickup ever so slightly, um, Again, just to try to balance out when I'm going from the bridge to the neck. I don't want the, br the, the bridge to be super loud and then the neck is like, did he hit, does he have the volume off? So, um, yeah, I knew right away as soon as I got this thing, even though it had like 10s on here. 10 11s, really hard, even with the, um, the tremolo, I could feel it while I was bending. Just playing it, cold and then plugging it in I was like wow this is you know how you know right away this is a keeper so um you know I didn't wait I like I said I give it a two-week spaghetti test you know you throw spaghetti in against the wall and if it sticks you keep you know it's, it's done um I didn't need two weeks to know this is going to be a keeper for life you know you like I said you just you just know right away and the neck on this is probably, you know, the video I posted last, it's probably the best neck I've ever had in my hand to play. It's nice and thin. It's got just enough meat on it where it's not super thin, but it's not chunky at all. And it's got that width to it where it's very close to a classical neck. Or if you get like a nylon string guitar, those are like a little bit wider on the fingerboard. I think the nut is a little bit longer than normal, but just an amazing neck. And for that alone, it's a, it's a keeper. Um, so yeah, I got to uh, do the luthier knot on here. So I have less guitar string wrapped around each tuning peg or tuning key. The um, Paul Reed Smith tuners on the back. I was going to put locking tuners on here. Paul Reed Smith um, sells a, a set for like, I think 80, 90 bucks. And the other set that I had, you know, I played it the day I got it and um, I didn't do much to it. And in that video, it was out of tune. I, I kind of had a feeling it, it was, I, I heard something off. And then I, when I checked it, sure enough, but then when I tuned it up and I was playing it with those strings on for like, let me see, yeah, yeah, two days, Friday and Saturday, it stayed in tune and, you know, I just needed a lighter, lighter gauge on, on the, uh, on the guitar. So Sunday came around and I took the strings off. I, um, polished uh you know i took triple zero grit to the fingerboard the stainless the, not stainless steel frets the uh, nickel polish frets and um oiled them up and like i said i i'm almost certain these are sold i don't know the exact um specs on this i'm almost certain that these um mark tremonte SEs are sold with a rosewood fingerboard. This this rosewood is really super dark on here, and it almost looks like it's ebony, but I don't believe it is. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna say a nice thick dark or rich dark rosewood fingerboard on here. Um, Graph Tech nut. And of course, I use my sewing machine. I do have graphite powder, and I've used the graphite powder on the nuts before. And because it's powder, um, you have to, you, you, the best thing to do is 
to loosen the string up, put a, a squirt of powder in there and then put the string, string back down and tighten it up uh, because it, it doesn't stay in there. I like the sewing machine oil because it, you know, I, what I do is I, I put a drop where each string goes. I give it a minute to soak in and then I just, I just, you know, dab the top with a rag um, to dry it off, but it, I let it seep into each string um, cut whatever you want to call it and that was it so um, I just took a rag to the back I took the triple zero stainless steel and I just did a quick wipe down you know um, and then I just took a rag and I just was wiping it and wiping it the back of the uh, neck you could still see a little bit of a gloss to it um, I didn't want to like sand it down because it was really fine. I had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, but I just figured, eh, while I have it out, let me just see if I can get, because sometimes you get that chalking, but I wasn't getting it on the neck, so I don't know why I, I did that anyway. It's just slightly dull, more a little bit duller than the body, as you could see, kind of thing. But, so, um, the bridge, I had to reset the bridge because, like I said, there was 10 11s on here. I put 9s on here, 946, pure knuckle wound. And I had to adjust the bridge and I had to adjust the neck. So that's without the truss rod cover, which I first time I've ever done on um, a uh, Paul Reed Smith guitar. Uh, you can see it's got the nut in there. <clears throat> And this is the bag of tools it came with. Actually came with two of the, the nut tools. I don't know why, maybe one was extra. You know, um, Allen keys, which you really don't need on here. And then I, I did remove the fourth spring and put it in the bag with the fifth spring where I'm, I'm sure it was sold like that. So in order to adjust the bridge on these, it's way different, and I've never had to do it before again either. I didn't look it up. I didn't YouTube it. Um, I just, just by looking at it, I could see the screws right here go right through to the body, all six, where you could see in front of the saddles, the screws. So what I did was I just, I had to loosen, you know, reverse turn all the counterclockwise, all the screws, I did it half steps at a time, um, three times, to bring up the bridge because when I had it set where the bridge was level, um, I had buzzing. So not only did I have to raise the bridge by turning all six screws, you know, three quarter turns, I also had to then reset the neck because the neck was, was pretty straight. And it didn't have much of that bow in it. So I just had to, um, you know, give it, a, a, again, three quarter little turns with the tool, check the tuning. And then every time I was stretching the strings with the tremolo. Um, and then once I got it where everything was, was, was tuned up, I just let it sit. This is the first time I'm picking it up since yesterday. I started yesterday at about uh, 2.30, and here it is, 1.30. And so why I'm saying that is that I didn't know how to set the bridge up. I just figured it out. And when you set a neck, when you set a neck and you, you're dealing with something with a tremolo on it, you can't expect an immediate um, fix like a Les Paul. Um, you really have to give it time for, you know, because when you, you turn it, it's, it's really, I, I think it's got to settle, is what I'm getting at. So, because when I set the neck and then I set the, the tremolo, I was still having buzzing. And I was like, well, there's nothing more I could do with it right now. I don't want to be, you know putting too much of a, of a bow on the neck and I don't want to be raising this too high. Um, let me just let it sit and see what happens. Today I, I picked it up and I went 
and down the whole fingerboard and nice clean as a whistle no buzzing and I checked the tuning and the tuning it stays in tune I, you know it's I'm impressed by the guitar I like the fact that I had the little set screw here so I could tighten this up so it's not swinging and dangling all around on the back <clears throat> I left the covers off here and removed this one as well to show you that the um, covers are um, shielded. That's the back, that's the front. And the cavity is shielded as well. You know, that black spray, whatever. And that you've got four 500K, probably one and twos for the volume and tone, hand soldered in the back and here's the bridge where they had two springs here and two springs here and nothing in the middle so I just I like it like that I don't like the V shape I don't like it going in that, that direction um, I think it uh, uh, it creates more tension on the whammy bar and I I like it where I could actually move it that's why I like the three springs I had one, one of my Holly Benton Telecasters with the Tremolo uh, Wilkinson. I had two springs on there, and it stayed in tune. So, um, yeah, I put the three, and and the other reason why I like the the three in this fashion is again, I think that it it gives you more stability for the tuning, and that's just me, you know. That just could be my take on it, but. I've had Charvels that I've gotten and um, with that, where they're coming from here, going to the center. And I was playing them and I was like, I'm having an issue with it. It was it was stiff to use on, and it was on Floyd's. I had Floyd's on it. And um, it wasn't staying in tune. So I put it that way, no more issues. Again, you know, that's just my experience. So yeah, that's about it. So that's that's the back one piece mahogany. This is a um, two piece maple neck. It's like a bird's eye maple. It's really hard to see, but there are, you know, birds bird's eye uh, uh, spots dots <laughs> in there. The uh, fantastic cutaway to get down here on the um, higher frets, and the brilliant. Quilted maple top. So, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick rundown because I don't see too many videos on these here, particular Mark Tremonti PRS guitars. Um, the SEs, the ones that I see are only the black tobacco charcoal tiger maple burst or the 5000 USA. Um, guitars. I keep on turning my head because like I said I've got all my stuff laid out on the bed and of course the dog is is very fidgety today and laying on my bag of tools and I, I don't want to lose the screws so I'm sorry that I'm a bit distracted at the same time with this video so thanks for watching have a good day and a better tomorrow oh yeah Four hundred and seventy-six dollars, I think this was. So if you could find one like this, because these were selling used for eight hundred uh, on Reverb and um, and uh, eBay Guitar Center, and it came with a hot showcase. Great, super deal. Adios, amigos. Yeah, maybe not. Bye, escondidos, muchachos, compañero.